Carson and also the big league FUFA big leagues also bouncing back on Thursday so many games will be on your way and the biggest of it will be happen at Abbott Greenlight Stadium as on the Parker will be hosting the log leaders I'm talking about the cops that's police for you Calvary will also be on an away trip and also the English Premier League over the weekend we had so many games and the biggest game the biggest encounter was that one between Arsenal and the team of Liverpool we saw the two sides uh, spoils sharing the spoils after the normal time ending in one all tie Gabriel Magalhães the defender for Arsenal scored in the fourth minute before the equalizer had to come through Mo Salah for the team of Liverpool that one wasn't the only game played in English Premier League over the weekend Sunday had one game on the card it was between Wolves and the team of Chelsea this game was played at Molineux Stadium how it went we'll be doing discussion about how English Premier League games went over the weekend and at the same time time today we have so many games to be played and the biggest of it will be happening in the late kickoff of the day as Manchester United will be having a game with Aston Villa. The, the likes of Chelsea will be in action come tomorrow against, against Crystal Palace. Manchester City over the weekend they were playing the finals of FIFA Club World Cup and because of that their game that was supposed to take place with the team of Brentford was pushed ahead as postponed. The rest of the teams we are all in action and also some breaking stories continues to happen in the world of sports and a very big news, huge news not a negative news but a positive news for Manchester United fans as Radcliffe has already agreed a deal with the Glazer family to buy 25% of the share of the almighty club, that's it, Manchester United. And also at the camp of Anfield, that's it, Liverpool. Bad news for the fans because their defender, Constantinos, or as Costa Simicas, is going to be out for several months because he broke his soldier when actually Arsenal was playing the team of Liverpool and the injury he has sustained I'll be able to tell you the kind of the injury how long he's going to be out for the team of Liverpool we'll be talking about that one and we are also doing the countdown of general transfer window today is already 26th of December that means we are only left with five days for general transfer window to open which teams needs which players and in which department is actual what we'll be talking about five days for general transfer window to open and right now the players that are leading the pipeline are players like Phillips the likes of Juventus all I in him Newcastle is also in the race you talk about still quiet about him whether he's going to sell the guy or not is actual what everyone is waiting to hear from me and let's go story to story and as usual we kick start our discussion with what is happening within the region we talk about national stories if the continental stories are there we don't leave them out we always give for you and as usual we finalize everything with what is happening in the world of international sports and much of 80 percent of what we give in international sports is what is coming in europe much as sometimes we discuss saudi professional league by the way it's called the saudi professional league though in most cases you see on is having a special whatsapp platform whereby every link is always there to follow every so not forgetting about twitter and also facebook let's kick start our discussion with what is happening what's night regional preliminary rounds of uganda cup some games had already taken place and others continue to happen and we have a very big encounter come tomorrow that one will be when as the as coach urban will be sitting at boma ground to welcome the side called the nyangila football club nyangila football club the first preliminary round they played it was also against a side that comes from Yumbe Diefwe, they played against the Yumbe Hospital, whereby it ended by a slim goal win in favor of Nyangilia. So again, they have been drawn against Coach Urban. We are waiting to see how things are going to transpire in that particular encounter. As I said, this is still the preliminary round of Stanbik in Uganda Cup, and after this, we will see the draws coming national-wide. Coach Urban, the recent game they played, it was actually in the West Nile region league in Nile zone are up against a Moyo Town Council football club and they went away to Moyo it was actually at the Chelsea Stadium and they were beaten 
by three goals to one. Meanwhile, you talk about Nyangile. Nyangile is actually a team that comes from Koboko Defue, and this is a team that is playing in fourth division league. And recently, they went and knocked out a team that's playing in regional league. Congratulations to them, and a very big task test for them whether they can be able to surpass Coach Urban is what everyone is waiting to see in this festive season. Not only that game, remember we also had a game which was in the preliminary round of Nyagakizon Stanbik Uganda Cup and the team Alpha Rising Stars also bouncing back. They had a win over a team called the Parker as a Pesa Lion Guard. It depends on how you want to call them. They had a 2 1 win over the team. So we are waiting to see which team they are going to face next. And also a very big encounter in Nile Zone. That's not in the West Nile Regional League. I'm talking about the Stanbic Uganda Cup as Uganda Cup. Preliminary around as a team called Medical FC. Medical FC is actually a team that comes from Yumbe and they also play in 4th Division League. Much as 4th Division League has not started yet, but I know very well this is a team that plays in the 4th Division League. They will also be playing a team called Aliqua Pyramids. Aliqua Pyramids is actually a team that comes from Maracha Defue and this is also in the preliminary rounds of Stanbic Uganda Cup. These are the updates I can give you as far as the preliminary round of Stanbic in Uganda Cup in West Nile region is concerned. Both Nyagaki Zone and Nile Zone. We previously talked about how the likes of Nebi Sendor, by the Black Angels, you talk about Cowork Horizon Stars play their game so these are a few games i feel i need to give you leaving that one there and we take a look at what is going to happen in march the 14 of fufa big league but power fufa big league match day 14 is also bouncing back on thursday not today not tomorrow but i feel west night television soccer pundits feel they need to give you the fixtures early enough such that you can prepare yourself since this is festive season you need to work according to plans so it will, it will not look good if I will be in person to draft for you the fixers as give you the fixers on that very day when the games are played. So I need to give you the fixers two days earlier such that you can prepare yourself. And more special for the fans of Ondoparaka Football Club and also for the fans of Calibar Football Club. These are of course the two national base sides that are representing us as far as the second tier of Ugandan football is concerned. For Calvary, they will be taking a trip away to Chinda boys. Meanwhile, for the team of Onduparaka, they'll be maintaining their almighty Ababet Greenlight Stadium. We know when we talk about uh, the, the Ababet Greenlight Stadium, more special this season, they are yet unbeaten. They have only, they have only slipped two points. It was against the Mbale base side called Mbale Heroes. Most of the games they have played at home, it has always been wins on the side of the Caterpillars. Statistically, out of the six games they have played at home, winning five of them and drawing one. And that draw came when they had that 1-1 one -one draw with the team of Mbale Heroes. Another one for them will be against a tough side called Police. Police currently, they are the log leaders as far as the table standing of Bet Power FUFA Big Leagues concerned. Sand. Meanwhile, you look at the team of Ontoparka, they sit somewhere ninth on the log, so it's actually a class between the team that is sitting that is sitting at number one with the 30 points against the team that is sitting at number nine with something of around 16 points. And what are we anticipating in this huge encounter? Like I said, this game will not be taking place at the Kavumba Recreation Center. This game will be taking place at Ababet Greenlight Stadium. I'd already given the statistics behind the team of Ontoparka. Parker when it comes to home games I don't want to repeat myself a win for the team of uh Police, the cops against Caterpillars will see them extending the points gap between themselves and the team of Lugazi to something of around the five. Because Lugazi currently they having 28 points, cops they having 30. Meanwhile, a win for Ondoparaka obviously will change their position and it will take their points tally to that 19. And there, their position might be changed. That is one big encounter I should talk about tomorrow. I will be joining that in the studios of Western Television by the other soccer pundits, you talk about Owen Zaga, you talk about Luis, uh, Susie Linda. I was about to say Luis Susie, but he's called Susie Linda. 
So tomorrow we'll still be talking about this game or as these games. Not only that game to be played in match day 14 of uh, Bet Power FUFA Big League, as well, we also have got other encounters. Say to me, meanwhile, we'll be having a game with the team of Mbale Heroes, and this game will be taking place at uh, Nakisunga Sanza ground and the home ground of Chetume. And as I said earlier on, where well, actually I was giving the highlights of the discussion, Calvary will be taking a trip away to Tinda Boys. Recently, Calvary took all the bragging rights as they played their neighbors on the Parker Football Club. It was a derby between themselves. This game took place last week. It was on Thursday. They won the game by two goals to one. Equally, they have in the same number of points with the team of Caterpillars. It's only the, 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 the positive celebrate, the, the, the negatives separating the two sides on the Parker of course they are a better side compared to the negatives as with the positives compared to the team of Calvary and also police have just talked about this one giving brief analysis about this one on the Paraka will be the home side up against the team of police meanwhile not only that game will also be having a tough encounter it will be a game between Boma FC and they will be traveling away to Mbale and this game is coming up against Kataka and this game is at Municipal Sander that's in Mbale that is another huge encounter you may talk about. Meanwhile, uh, there is a game between Tigezi homeboys up against Ndeze University. Ndeze University, we all know how they have been performing. They sit somewhere down in the relegation zone alongside teams like Jinza North United. You may mention teams like Young Elephant. Are they going to work, work up against Tigezi homeboys is actually what everyone is waiting to see. And this game will be starting at 4 p.m. East African time. And this game will be at Kabale Municipal Stadium. That is the brief highlights I can give you behind that particular encounter. Another big game is actually the team that is currently sitting second on the log with 28 points. Lugazi traveling away to Young Elephant. So, Young Elephant, they are sitting in the relegation zone. Lugazi is a team that is following the team of police. That means a win for Lugazi up against Young Elephant away from home will see. Actually, let, let me give the general statistics in these two fixers. A defeat for police against Caterpillars, which is possible, will, and a win for the team of Lugazi up against the Young Elephant, will see Lugazi going on top of the log of FUFA Big League. Meanwhile, a draw for police up against Ondoparaka and a win for Lugazi up against Young Elephant will see both sides all having 31 points but the team of police is having superior goal difference positives compared to the team of Lugazi. That is the brief statistics I can give you behind these two fixers. And lastly, Karo Karunzi of my producer, by the way, our producer Jonathan Opak is a very big fan of Karo Karunzi, will be traveling away to Jinza North United. So these are the fixers to be played in March day 14 and 15 of Bet Power FUFA Big League. And all these games are going to take place on Thursday. Thursday will be the 28th of this particular month, December, and the year remains 2023. And some of these games will be live on FUFA TV. And at the same time, all these games, they are kickstarting at 4 p.m. East African time. Let's leave the discussion about Bet Power FUFA Big League and we talk about Star Times Uganda Premier League, the top tire of Ugandan football. It's also bouncing back after Christmas and these games actually they are kickstarting on March Day, March Day 14, 12, uh, March Day 13, 14 is kickstarting actually on, uh, it is, it is kickstarting on Thursday with the three games on the card and recently Vipers sacked their manager, that's Leonardo Neiva but I will be coming for that one. And Chitara will be having a date with the team of Congolos Arue Hill Sports Club. By the way, Congolo is the nickname for the team of Arue Hill Sports Club. It's just like the nickname of Onduparaka called Caterpillars and they will be taking a trip away to Chitara. Recently they had a game. They were actually beaten by the team of Maroons which ended by three goals to one and they still remain in the relegation zone. The rock bottom team with only five points and they are traveling away to Chitara. Are they going 
able to pick something like a draw as a win in this particular encounter is actually what everyone is waiting to see because the first phase of the season is almost coming to an end. You look at the other teams that are probably sitting ahead of the team of uh, Arua Hill Sports Club. Some of them are having 13 points, others are having 12, others are having 9. That means they need to do something if they are to fight their position to see that they come out of the relegation zone and play in start times Uganda Premier League next season. And we are waiting to see Tetara, they are performing very well, extremely very well. When you look at the table standing, they sit somewhere third on the log, just some few points behind the team that second on the log, Vipers. So we are waiting to see how things will transpire on Thursday. Not only that encounter to be played, the table leaders currently with 29 points, Ball will be having a date with Busoga United. Are they going to win this one? Recently, they also had a win over the team of Vipers. By the way, a history has been been broken behind that win bull had over the team of venoms in two years vipers had not lost a game at st mary's tender their home ground until over the weekend when we saw the team of bull breaking the zinc to see that they had a 3-2 win over the venoms and scooping all the three points that might be the reason as to why we have seen lawrence molindra parting ways with the head coach Leonardo Neiva, but will be coming for that. So, Bull will be having a game with Busoga. Are they going to continue with the final run? Is actually what everyone is waiting to see. KCC, ever since the start of the new season of Star Times Uganda Premier League, for the first time winning games back to back consecutively twice or is two times recently they also had a game against their neighbors it was actually Kambala Derby up against Sports Club Villa they won the game by two goals to one and this time they are having a game up against UPDF UPDF they also sit on the red carpet they sit together with the Red Hill Sports Club in the relegation zone and actually they are the, they are the home side welcoming the team of KCA meanwhile on Friday and this one will be on 29th of this particular month and the year is 2023 will be having two games to be played you are actual will be having a date with Mbara City meanwhile neck will entertain the side of Soltino Bright Stars normal when I talk about Soltino Bright, Soltino Bright Stars there is always one player who keeps on impressing me each and every time and I always keep on repeating, once you see a win on the side of Soltino Bristers, once you see a draw coming on the side of Soltino Bristers, there is always a pivot man called Nelson Sekatuka. If he is not the man behind the assist, he has to be the goal scorer. That means Nelson Sekatuka's Soltino Bristers will be having a game with Neck FC. Meanwhile, URA will be having a date with Mbara City. The things which have been favoring, one key thing which has been favoring the team of Mbara City in the games they have already played, they continue to play, is actually the state of their pitch called the called the, the state is the state of their pitch. The name was just skipped out of my mind. So that pitch is always very tough. The stadium is always very tough and it has been something rare for most of the teams going to that pitch and they coming back with all the maximum number of points. You may ask the likes of Vipers, you talk about KCA, you talk about Sports Club Villa. They have visited that area and most of them they have come back with a point. Others even get to be beaten at the city of Mbara. So they'll be having a game with the URA, but this time they are not the whole, they are not the home side, they are traveling away to URA. And on Saturday, this one will be the 30th, the, the 30th of December 2023, Wakiso Giants will be having a date with the Sports Club Villa. Meanwhile, Express will be having a date with the team of Vipers. Express struggled a lot. They won something of around the five games without picking a win, but recently, in March day 12, we saw them running riot over the team of Neg, demolishing them by five goals to two. Are they going to continue with that spirit up against the Vipers? Is actually what we are waiting to see. Vipers, I talked about this one recently, they lost into the hands of the Log leaders, that's a ball being eight three two. Are they going to overcome that express? Also, a derby, and this game will be taking place at one kulukuku. We are waiting to see how this game is not at one kuku. This game will be taking place at Mutesa 2 Stadium. And the last game is actually a date between Maroons and the team of Gaddafi. Gaddafi 
The recent game they played, they were actually aged by the team of Wakiso Giants by a goal to nil. Maroons recently, they had that comfortable win over Arua based side, whereas West Nile based side Arua Hill Sports Club. And briefly, I need to highlight you with how, of course, the table standing is looking like. On top is Bull, they having 29 points, being followed in the second position is Vipers. Vipers is having 24 points, and the points gap is only five. A defeat for Bull and a win for Vipers. Vipers will see Vipers the Venoms closing the points gap, but Bull fans will not want to see the points gap uh, being closed into the hands of Vipers. Third on the log is Chitara, they having 23 points, that's the point behind Vipers. Fourth is Maroons, they having 22 points. Meanwhile, the team that is currently at the number five is the team of Neck with 20 points. At the number six is Sports Club Villa with 19 points. At the number seven is URA AFC with something of around 17 points. I cannot give all. Let's take a look at teams that are sleeping on the red carpet. At the number 14th is Bus Soga United with the 12 at the number 15th is UPDF they only having nine points meanwhile at the number 16th is the team of a sports club they having five points to their names so this is how the log the table standing the line of the table is looking like as far as the start times Uganda Premier League is concerned that's all with the fixers to be played in the next months of the next matches of the start times Uganda Premier League let's talk about one key story a personality called Leonardo Neiva as you can call him Leonard Neiva he's a Brazilian by name immediately FC their arch rivals in the game they play and I continue to repeat papers we are beaten by three goals things I looked at as to why this guy was sacked first of all after two years, we are seeing Venoms, Vipers being beaten at St. Mary's Tender. Such kind of a history being broken like that is something not easy. Second, Vipers thought that they were going to be the team of Bull to see that they narrow, they narrow the points gap between themselves and Bull. And themselves and Bull. Now something of five. And you see how Bull is the team that does not uh, lose games easily now maybe moses molindo the, the 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 owner of vipers has seen that one as a danger in terms of cutting closer to the team of bull fc that is the second thing i looked at which attributed to his sucking and the third thing is this guy was brought to transform the state of vipers when it comes to continental games the continental games where the tournaments i am talking about are you talk about CAF champions league you talk about the CAF confederations cup and the team of vipers has always been making the consistency when it comes to going to the CAF champions league but they have always been knocked out in the preliminary rounds maybe they went for leonardo neva thinking that this guy was coming to transform the team as far as continental CAF champions league is concerned but you look at how the guy performed the coach himself performed with the boys they were actually knocked out in the preliminary round the preliminary round they faced the team of Gianne galaxy Janen Galaxy is actually a team that comes from Botswana and right now they are performing very well. I should tell you, Janen Galaxy that knocked out Vipers, they are performing very well. Even they are beating some of the big teams we have in the continent of Africa. After being eliminated out of the CAF Champions League, Moses Molindo, Vipers at all said no. We are going to give you a chance whether you can do it perfectly when it comes to domestic games. You look at how Viper started. They started at a low atmosphere, low tone, with the with a huge number of points between themselves and Bull FC. Now he has been trying. He has been trying most with the team of Vipers till recently losing into the hands of Dust Bowl FC, losing at home after two years, it pains a lot. But to me, that might be the reason as to why Vipers decided to part ways with Leonardo Neva. Which courts are they going to go for next is actually what everyone is waiting to see. And this is also a rumor and 
we are also going to get uh, authentic information about uh, this story. Loki, Caesar, Loki Manzoki, this guy was actual picture training with the rest of the boys at the camp of St. Mary's Tender. Whether he has been officially signed or else waiting for January, maybe Vipers is waiting for January to resign him because he had actually played for the team of Vipers before and he was actually the top scorer in the league. Manzoki is actually the guy that has been rumored uh, coming back to the team of Vipers. Not only that one, we are not only discussing football, also a very big story, a very huge story, I should describe it like that, coming on the side of national team. The national team I am talking about is not Uganda cranes, I am actually talking about the cricket national teams. Actually, national teams, not only one team, there are two teams. We have got Victoria Pals. That is the women team of cricket we have in for the country and also the cricket cranes, the male team as the men's team. And these two teams, they have actually been performing very well. When it comes to regional games, you talk about continental games, you talk about maybe international games. And two things I need to talk about is the, the two teams, the two national teams for cricket we have in the country, they are going to represent the country, raise the flag of the country, come next year in World Cup. Victoria Pals, they have just qualified, they qualified together with Zimbabwe, joining their brothers. I'm talking about cricket cranes. For cricket cranes, they'll be raising the flag of the country of the continent of Africa together with Namibia. And actually, why am I discussing about them at this point is they have actually learned their opponents they are going to face in the African Games, not in the World Cup. There is a tournament which is also coming in March for the, for the, for the two cricket teams for, of, of the country. Victoria Pals, they have already learned their opponents, whereby they have been pitted together against their neighbors. Kenya, you talk about Zimbabwe and Rwanda. These are the three countries plus the Victoria Pals, fourth one, they will be facing in the African Games tournament come in March. Meanwhile, for the cricket cranes, they have been pitted together with the Ghana. We have got South Africa, there is a Kenya themselves, not forgetting about cricket cranes themselves. So we are waiting to see how they are going to perform. Meanwhile, in the African Cup, which was hosted by South Africa, the cricket cranes, they also performed very well. Despite losing the open game into the hands of Rwanda, they were actually the champions defending the trophy they won last year. And this time, they're also going for another tournament. We hope they also perform very well in, in, in the tournament. And also, so recently qualifying for World Cup for the first time together with the sister club Victoria Pulse. That means the cricket department is doing well as far as sports in the country is concerned. My name is Oracle Benson.